So we swapped out some of our tools. Uh, we took the tools that we don't need to access uh, these covers, the socket and wrench, um, and we we brought in an Allen an Allen key and the clutching tool, and we're going to open it. We're opening up the access panel for the uh, to get it to get it the uh, the clutch, so we can show you clutching in uh, and clutching out the MRG. Uh, so seniors working those. I'm going to go get a Ziploc bag. We'll put all those bolts in a Ziploc bag. Again, for a lot of equipment, down in engineering spaces, you'll see that the bolts are just put up somewhere. And that's fine for small repairs and stuff, but something like this where you have to keep track of everything, we always want to have a Ziploc bag. And that's exactly what we have here. So we'll, as, as we get those off, uh, we'll put them in here, we'll count them, uh, and then we make sure that that many comes out of there. So. Uh, don't forget to add the Ziploc bag to our inventory list so that it, so that they know we have it uh, inside the the secure area. And of course, like it, like the access cover, uh, you want to wipe around this plate uh, prior to pulling it off. Same idea. You're going to look in the immediate area around it. You're going to look below it to make sure you're not stepping in anything that could bring debris up. And of course, you're going to look in the overhead to make sure, even though you were just working right here, there may not that overhead may have been cleared. Uh, but wherever your clutch cover is located, or the access panel for your clutch, uh, different overhead, different hazards, so you always want to do the same procedure anytime you're accessing anything on the MRG. Uh, so you saw Senior, he wiped around it, make sure there's no debris here, especially tucked back in those, in those ridges that can collect dirt and grime. And now we're going to, he he'll, as he pulls those out, we'll put them into the Ziploc bag so that we don't lose track of them. And you'll notice on the Allen key, there's no place to really tie your, your lanyard. So you tie it as tight as you can get it, but because it would slide off in any direction, you wrap that knot wherever you have it tied, you wrap it with duct tape. And that prevents it from sliding. And you may have noticed that when we had the access tools as well, even though the line was secure just to prevent anything from potentially loosening or sliding, when you tie, when you tie up your tools like that on the lanyard, you can wrap a piece of that duct tape around it. And it just, it's just one more layer of defense against anything going wrong. And you'll see these plastic labels on your bearings for your bearing temps. That's pretty common across the fleet, but those also can become a FOD hazard because they're already so close. You see them all the time. You never, you know, you're not looking for them. If they're loose at all, if they're not adhered tightly, uh, then those need to be removed from the immediate area as well so that they're not, they're not becoming FOD. And again, you can see Senior Chief, he, he's got the lanyard on his glasses. Uh, but in addition to that, to prevent that lanyard from slipping off, he's got that duct tape to the glasses as well. So if his glasses were to slide off, if he's looking down, if his glasses were to slide off, that lanyard is going to catch and that tape's going to prevent the lanyard from pulling off the uh, pulling off or releasing from the legs of that uh, of those glasses. Um, if you don't need glasses for the work, it's of course it's less hassle if you not to wear them. Um, but it's a simple fix if you do need those glasses while you're while you're doing this. So you can see as he turns that Allen key, because it's taped in place, it's wind, it's winding that lanyard. And so every time he gets it, he has to untwirl it, and that's what you're seeing there. Um, so again, it's you just have to be mindful when you're working with tools that are that have a lanyard attached like that. It's just being careful and making the you know doing those. Every, every step you take with those tools, you just have to be deliberate and, and, and careful. All right, so yes, it can be a hassle. Yes, it can be a nuisance. But one, that's the requirement. Two, it's the only way to make sure that all of that stays on the outside of the MRG. So these are our bolts. We're not going to lanyard the bag to anything, but we're going to put it 
clear out of our workspace so there's no chance of it coming over and, and, and falling in these access panels. Uh, but you can see Ziploc bag, all the bolts are accounted for, everything we took out made it directly into the bag and we're going to put this aside and, and, and out of the way. Once we open it, I'll have them stop it and then I'll go about to turn it in. Okay. You'll be busy. Okay. Right. Perfect. Right where we are. <laughs> All right, so we've opened the access to the to the clutch. Again, you want to make sure you make the cover clear out of the way. And that fitting is what you're looking for. That's what the clutching tool is going to engage with. So you want that dead center you want that dead center uh, of the access panel so you uh, have have a little bit of room you know and that just requires stopping the stopping the turning gear in the right spot All right, this is your indication. This will be your mechanical indication of whether the clutch is engaged or disengaged. So you can see now the arrow uh, is pointing to the disengaged indication. So we'll insert the clutching tool and we'll engage the clutch. So the teeth on your clutching wrench, a note about this particular tool uh, we're using this tool, and this is the same tool that I, or similar tool that I had um, during both of my chain tours. But these are supposed to come with a breakaway, uh, a shear pin inserted in here, so that if something were to happen and the the shaft were to roll while you had your clutching tool inside, it would actually shear off at a safe distance, and you'd still be able to operate if this uh, if this teeth, tooth part uh, were to get jammed in place but as you can see this particular tool it's solid uh, solid steel with no shear pin at all so obviously if this were to get uh, locked in place uh, locked inside the the MRG it would cause significant amount of damage uh, because of the thickness of that of that rod and so that's why you'll see typically if you if you order a new tool or if you if you have the the correct tool you'll see one that has a shear pin in there uh, it'll either be a hollow pin, a hollow piece of shafting, or a smaller diameter uh, with a with a um, with a mark around the center of it as a, as a way to, to to allow that to shear off without doing significant damage to MRG. But this is what we have. This is what we're going to use. This is perfectly safe to use. Um, if it does get locked in, though, uh, the 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 amount of caution we'll have to use is is going to be just a little bit higher because it's not going to shear off like they're designed to. So you can see the, the four teeth there and the four teeth here. We're going to sync that up. It goes on the first set and then you press down to engage the second set of teeth. Again, all of our tools and our flashlight are all lanyard off. All right, so it goes on that first set and then a slight twist and you push in to engage it completely. And you can feel that. You'll, see, you'll feel that spring pressure I don't know if, that, if that's picking it up, but there's some spring tension. So when you twist it, you push down and that's what locks you in. So in order to turn that, you have to maintain a little bit of pressure on there to keep it from backing up. If you just go to the first set, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to spin on the tip of that fitting. You actually want to fully engage with those bottom four teeth meshed. So we're turning it counterclockwise. And again, this is where that lanyard is going to get wrapped around the top of your tool again. Um, and 
And you'll see that as we get closer, there's an oil port and oil will start coming out of that port. And that's a good indication that your, your clutch is in fact engaging as it presses that oil out. And now also the tool is now locked in place because when the clutch is halfway between or anywhere in between engaged or, and disengaged, that tool is going to lock in place. So now there's no way to get that tool out uh, until you get it either fully engaged or fully disengaged and that's to prevent damage to the clutch. And you can see this I don't like the twine that we used on this tool. You can see it's some sort of hemp or something, uh, some sort of marlin. And it's all these fibers. I don't like that these fibers could actually go in here. So what I'm gonna do, um, once we get this fully engaged, is the first opportunity, I'm gonna take this line off. I should have used something a little cleaner. Uh, you can see this cotton line uh, is, is a much cleaner, uh, line to use. I don't like this because of all the debris it could potentially leave. So I was able to get the, the tool out which means that it's either fully engaged or fully disengaged. Um, clear. So in order to... Oh! Perfect. So what we just did is we bumped it in the forward direction just slightly so that we can see the indication. So you can see this this hole with oil, if you put your finger in there, you squeeze that oil out of it. And you can barely read, it's hard to read, I'm sure it's hard in the, with the camera, but you can read the word out. And what that means is the MRG is actually clutched out. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a, it's a it's a finger sized port, um, about 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 two inch about an inch and a half um, away from the clutching tool fitting, um, and you can see it it fills up with oil because you still have oil flowing in, but you can you can make out the word out, um, and we'll show that again when we when we clutch it back in. So that's your indication that and the fact that the tool actually released are, that's your indication. Uh, that you are completely clutched out. Uh, then this frees you up, you would close it back up and it would free you up to do all the maintenance you need. Um, we're not actually doing that maintenance so we're going to go ahead and clutch it back in. So again, it's that first set of teeth and then a slight turn and then we're going to turn it clockwise to clutch it in. And it's hard to see, but something you'll notice is your oil will have poured it out of the, out of, um, the hole to the left of the clutching tool. Um, and so that starts showing you that it's, it's starting to move in the right direction. And then if you look at the, the indicator, if you clear the oil out of that indicator and you look inside there, you can no longer read the word out. Uh, and that's because it is now in between clutched in and clutched out. And of course the tool is locked in place. So those are your indications that it's that you're fully engaged uh, and that you're moving in the right direction. And now as you get closer to fully clutched in, can you see that port? All right, so that's, so that's what you're looking for. And as you turn it clockwise, you can see the new indication start coming in, right? And that's the word in is now coming into full view. And the clutching tool just got, just came to a stop. And so you can see the word in is, in, is visible. And that's your, that's your indication that the clutch is now clutched in. And now my clutching tools can be released. All right, so those are your two indications. Your clutching tool is released and you're either clutched in or out based on the word that becomes visible in that, in that site. 
So this is where your clutching tool will connect and you can see the two sets of teeth. This first set, you go past that and then give it a slight twist to engage with this bottom set. And again, you can see there's a spring depression here where you have to apply that pressure. So the clutching tool goes there and this port right up here gives you your indication of either clutched in or clutched out. If you can't read it, sometimes that'll fill with oil when you clutch it out. Uh, you, one way to fix that is you, you stick your little finger in there to squeeze the oil out of it. Um, but it should read either in or out, uh, depending on the position of the clutch. And that gives you your physical indicator uh, that, you've, that you've turned it far enough. Uh, so a couple problems we've seen with this. Uh, and the, the one that scared me the most is I had my clutching tool locked in place. And even though I was both either fully engaged or full, fully clutched in or clutched out, the locking tool wouldn't release. I had full view of the, of the side indicator, but the tool wouldn't release. Um, and so that can be, uh, one, very nerve wracking, but extremely dangerous because you can see you've only got about five inches or so of clearance in order to try and jog the turning gear enough uh, to, to align the clutch in order to get that in and out. So it took me about four hours uh, in order to get the clutching tool out of there. Needless to say, I had more attention in the engine room than I ever wanted. Um, it wasn't that we did anything wrong. It was simply that for some reason, uh, the turning gear and the, and the clutch misaligned. And so even though I had come to the stops uh, for both clutched in and clutched out, uh, the, the tool wouldn't release. Uh, and there's no, without that shear pin in there, there's no way to get it out because of that. Um, so it's something to be mindful of. Uh, and and for, for me, what we ended up doing was we actually just jockeyed the turning gear back and forth until that clutch aligned correctly. Um, like I said, very, very stressful. Um, I didn't have a lot of control over the fact that it happened. All I could do was keep trying things in order to get that out. Uh, some people have, in order to get it fully, to get the tool to seat correctly, have used hammers to get it in there. Um, and then some have had to use hammers to get it out. We tried all of that. Um, and for us, it was a question of getting that clutch to mesh just right uh, in order to get that to loosen out. Um, so again, never, never approach this sort of MRG maintenance or the, the idea of clutching in or out the MRG. Never approach it casually. Um, never take shortcuts. Uh, it's a big deal when you do it because a lot of things can go wrong. Um, if, it, if it goes, if it clutches in and clutches out as smoothly as this one did, then that's great. And then you did all the prep work just to be cautious. But when something goes wrong, um, you never want to be caught having taken a shortcut that either caused it or, or exasperated a bad situation. Um, so again, never underestimate this maintenance. Um, never casually approach this procedure because a lot of things can go bad. But don't be afraid of it either. It's supposed to operate this way. Um, so there you go. So we're going to leave it clutched in. Uh, so again, I always breathe a sigh of relief when that tool comes out. Um, the other thing that we're going to do, this is the this is the cover, the inside of the cover. You can see just a little bit, not much, but a little bit of surface corrosion. So we're gonna wipe all that down, make sure that's clean. And then we're gonna wipe around um, the, the surface here as well. And we're gonna do that and we're gonna be mindful to, to any debris like this paint chip right here. We wanna brush that again away from the opening. So, Anytime I've had the MRG open, I've always been, I've always been down there supervising. Uh, top snipe will be down there. Uh, the main propulsion chief is always going to be down there. That may be your top snipe, uh, but if not, you want your, you want your, your GSM down there. Uh, the turn in the wrenches, that can be anybody. That can be the chief. Uh, it can be the, the second or first class. You want your LPO down there, but you want the people involved. Uh, especially your young sailors who may never have seen inside of an EMRG, uh, you want to get them involved. 
Uh, as long as you follow the procedures put out in the tech manuals and in the MRCs, uh, it's, it's a safe evolution, right? There's always risk, but it's safe if you follow the procedures. So every sailor and every officer who comes into the, the, the secure area has to be taped up. Their pockets have to be empty. Everything has to be inventory. But don't let that stop you from using this maintenance opportunity to train your sailors, to train your junior officers. Um, you know, get, get people down here who haven't seen it so they have a better understanding of it. But the actual maintenance, uh, it's, it's probably your detail-oriented, clean, uh, conscientious sailors from MP division doing, doing the actual maintenance. Uh, again, with more supervision than, than they, I'm sure they care to have. So we wipe down the cover, and I'm just going to wipe away. Uh, anytime you're wiping on these, you always want to wipe any debris away from the opening. And far enough away that it's not going to come back on your rag. So here, you know, you're wiping further away to get all of that cleaned up. Because you never want to brush anything into that access, of course. So once that's closed, now we'll bring our bolts back into the containment or back into the secure area because it, there's no chance of them falling in. As we, once we once we have these all uh, hand, hand hand tightened down. Then we'll we'll tighten them down with the Allen wrench, and, and like every every other uh, manhole cover or plate, uh, you always want to tighten that down in some sort of star pattern to make sure that that plate's being tightened evenly. Especially on this one, it doesn't have a gasket; it's just a metal to metal seal. Um, so tightening it evenly to make sure that it that it doesn't bind and, and, and leave a gap is is, is important. Well, and that's a good point, right? So the, the idea was brought up, why not having a power tool? And you certainly can do that. Um, but the same rules apply. So if you have a cordless um, screw gun of some sort, uh, that's fine. But then you have a lanyard on the gun itself, a lanyard, and a lanyard on the battery, and a lanyard on the tip, the Allen tip in this case, uh, that's, that's in the chuck of that tool. Um, if it's corded, depending on who you talk to, I would argue that as long as that cord is secured, right, either tied, uh, tied up at the plug, uh, that, that cord can act as a lanyard for the tool itself, but then you would still have to have a lanyard on the, the bit that you bring in. Um, so our idea was that we simplify what we bring in, and that means a, a, a single Allen wrench is, is easier to tie off than a three-piece three screw gun. And so something to keep in mind so here we are tightening, I don't know, 12 bolts, however many bolts. But it's tedious, and it's made even more tedious by the lanyard and having to kind of silly do that. So you've got all this manpower down here. You've got one sailor turning a wrench. It's pretty easy for everybody else to get casual and forget the environment that they're in. And that environment, until every bolt is tightened down, is torqued down, until everything is removed from the containment area and everything is inventoried, the environment you're in until the very end of it is an environment where your MRG is open. Um, so as you see people start talking or getting real casual, ask them to step outside the, the security area and only let the people who have a direct say in what's going on or direct hand in it um, should be the ones involved unless everybody's, everybody's engaged, everybody's focused, and everybody's mind is in the right place. So a couple things just sort of in the background while he's tightening it, you can see there's three or four different colors of paint on this access panel. Um, and, and you go into most ships and, and the majority of the MRGs are original paint. 
Uh, as far as I'm concerned, unless you've had some sort of severe corrosion issue or maybe a fire or something significant, there's never a reason to repaint the outside of your MRG. And the reason for that, it was all, uh, it was all painted at the factory. It's all uh, been done correctly and that paint adheres better than anything that your sailors are going to be able to put on it in the space in a hot, humid, uh, usually in motion uh, engineering space. So when you try to repaint it just to make it look pretty, to make it look all the same color, to make it look new, what you run the risk of is, have, is applying a coat of paint that will eventually chip and become a FOD hazard for your MRG when you do open it up. So again, and, and, and if you are going to paint it, I would go through NAVC and get their, get not their permission, but talk to them about it and make sure that everybody's on the same track. Because simply painting it to make it look pretty, I think the hazard outweighs the benefit. All right, so we've tested to make sure that all of the bolts are torqued down. Right now, we've, we've locked the access cover that we opened, and that padlock is in place. We've torqued down all the bolts for the clutch access. Uh, so our MRG is closed, it's secure. We're gonna pull all of our tools, all of our rags, all of our stuff out, um, and then we'll inventory it as we go out. Um, again, everything that comes in has to be written down, and everything that goes out has to be uh, has to be verified that you have everything. So a couple things did change. Uh, when I went out of the containment area, I did get a new pair of gloves because the other ones had gotten oily, and, and of course they're sweaty. Um, of course, these are the the thin ones. Uh, per the MRC, uh, sailors doing the maintenance would have to wear two pairs of these, or they can wear the eight mil gloves, which are a little bit thicker. Um, I did I did swap out gloves, so I took the old pair off. I showed them uh, to the the person who is in charge of the inventory. I showed him that I had two gloves, that those gloves weren't torn. I gave him the two old ones. He gave me two new ones. We didn't change the inventory sheet because between myself and senior chief, we still have two pairs of gloves. But I did a a, a formal verification that I replaced one set with the other set so he knows exactly what's in here and what I've already taken out. Uh, same thing if I had gotten rid of oily rags, right? I could have, I could have replaced a dirty rag uh, with, with, a, with a cleaner rag and I would have done a one-for-one -one swap. Showed the person in charge of the inventory, this is one oily rag, set that on the desk, take the clean rag in, verify that I still had the, f the same number, the original number of four rags uh, in the security area uh, in order to in order to maintain that inventory. So there are some things that you can swap in and out, but everything's got to be dead, uh, documented, everything's got to be ver verified. At this point, with everything locked up, uh, as chief engineer, I would call up to Central and have uh, the, e the EDO up there, whoever's in CCS at the time, I would have them sign out that the, the MRG is locked, uh, and has been verified by the chief engineer. The chief engineer is the one who gives the permission to open it, and it's the chief engineer's responsibility to verify that it's locked uh, and that all the t tools and everything are, are accounted for.